was Mother's Day, 2006, I believe. And I had my phone ring early in the morning and it was uh, a woman and I, I knew the name, but I didn't know her personally. All I knew that she was a New York Times bestselling author, name of Gail Lins. She published all these thrillers and did just a couple of movies and, uh, and she'd sold millions of books. Well, it turns out she was calling me because she had just spent the uh, early morning hours finishing up reading my book. And she said that uh, I had made her cry, I had made her laugh, I had her get in touch with spiritual parts of herself that she hadn't thought about in years. And, and she wanted to reach out and felt compelled to help me promote this book and uh, give me a mainstream publisher and an agent and help me rewrite it and re-edit it. And it was very generous. In the middle of all this conversation with this author, uh, following my own instincts and with no filters to my thoughts or words, I just blurt out, do you, uh, do you have an owl, some kind of artistic owl in your house someplace there? And she goes, no, she just dismissed it. And I'm sure she was wondering why I asked such a bizarre question. She went on telling me more about the stuff she wanted to do for me and everything. And I interrupted her again. And I go, no, do you have an owl by your front or back door or entrances or something? Uh, and she goes, no. Like she was getting annoyed at this point. So she talked a little bit longer. Then I, I stopped her and I said, no, do you have an owl at your back sliding door outside on the wall, perhaps metal sculpture, of some kind of artwork. She goes, no. And then I hear silence, like she's walking someplace. So she walks and I hear a sliding glass door and I hear her go, oh my gosh. And she gets back on her phone and says, 20, about 20 years ago, I put this sculpture, this metal sculpture of an owl on here. And and it was significant to me for one of the first things that uh, she said she'd bought and uh, when she was married, but it was uh, sitting out there and she'd forgotten about it. And then she wanted to know how I could know that she had this owl sitting by her sliding glass doors <laughs> to the back of her house when she didn't even know she had it. And she was ready to argue about even having it there. Well, that was the start of the conversation. And from that point, she was telling me about things and I was sensing things about her personal life. She was going through lots of, lots of uh, changes and evolutionary things in her life. She recently became a widow. Uh, one of her stepdaughters had a real bad accident, was in the hospital with a brain injury. There was a lot of really heavy stuff happening and, and she was having trouble writing her next book. She had uh, a writer's block and so, I was listening to her and offering some words. And then pretty soon she goes, do you, do you interpret dreams? And I said, yeah, I can, why, what do you got? So she tells me about this dream, the reoccurring dream that she keeps having where these whirling dervishes uh, are dancing all around her and they keep reaching out to her. And that's how it ends every time. It's just, they're dancing and she's sitting. So I didn't think about it very much. And I just said, well, I said, dance. It's not dance to dance. It's a dance of life. And what this dream is telling you is you need to reach out and, and engage in the dance of life. And I was trying to explain to her what I actually meant. I said, you know, there's, there's words that will better describe this. I picked up one of my, uh, my own poetry books, uh, Sacred Eye, which I had a poem about dance and life and stuff. And it was pretty close to what I wanted to say and I read it to her. I said, you know, that doesn't quite catch the essence of, of what this dream really means. I said, let's, let's just set this aside. Let's let the universe handle this. And I kind of took a note of the time and what time it was. And, and we've been talking for two, three hours and at this point. And we went on to talk about some other things. And then I kept, I kept seeing this image of a rosebud so I told her, I said, I said, you're like a rosebud. I said, that needs to open up so everybody can smell the fragrance. I said, 
you've been kind of holding your own energy and your sense of who you are within and the world is is moving on you need to open up this rosebud so we can all smell the beautiful fragrance and then she stopped and got quiet and i thought well that's odd that's, i must have offended her or something and then she goes i smell the essence and the fragrance of roses in my house really strong and she went out through the whole house and it was like all of a sudden it was filled with the scent of roses. It turns out after we eventually hung up on that conversation, five hours uh, total, that she observed that the, the fragrance lasted over three days, 72 hours plus. She had this scent. As soon as I mentioned that she, she was like a rosebud needed to open up and, 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 uh, and be the fragrance for others and herself, that she had that. Several things happened in that conversation, which I don't want to reveal and talk about because it was personal for her. But I, I talked about her life and things and stuff. And, and then when I hung up, I opened up my emails and there was a message from a military friend of mine, a Vietnam veteran, a military police officer, a no fluff guy. I mean, he was pretty straight. And he sent me this silly lyrics for this country and western song. And this song was about the dance, engaging the dance of life. Get up off the, you know, off the floor and off the chair and, and engage in life. And 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 I and I saw and he sent me the lyrics to this song, and I'm going, wow. And then I looked at the time it was sent on the email. It was the same time that I told her, let's set this aside, let's let the universe answer it better because I knew there was a better way to explain it. So I cut and pasted it, copied it, and uh, sent it off. And she got an email, and I explained to her, I said, this was sent, and I showed the time. And I said, this is what I was trying to say. So it was interesting that that message came exactly the time I said the universe would handle it and take care of it. Now, Gail lived in Santa Barbara, beautiful Santa Barbara, for over couple decades she enjoyed and loved california um, all of a sudden she meets a guy and falls in love with a retired judge in maine and she moves off to maine and 10 years go by we had intermittent conversations not much a few conversations before she left when i was visiting her i i, I gave her a couple of crystals gave her a crystal ball, a real nice one. And I gave her a healing rod. It was a copper tubing on, a, on brass and it had a crystal at the end of it. It was wired for energy. It was a really neat thing. And I said, hang on to this, you'll need it. And she took it. So then I got a phone call about 10 years later and she goes, Bill, she left me a message, Bill, I had I, I'd lost this, Crystal, I'm assuming she talked about the healing rod. Uh, and I couldn't find it for the last 10 years. When I moved, I couldn't find it again. But I was thinking about you this week, really thinking about you and needed to talk to you. And when I went to, to get a pair of my shoes, must have been in the closet or something, and there was this crystal inside the shoe, which she thought was interesting. We had another wonderful conversation. But sometimes, when you're talking to people and you have an idea and something to, to say, most people will filter it out and they'll censor it and say, well, I, I, I can't tell this woman that. I mean, she's, she was telling me all these nice things she wanted to do for me. And I keep coming back with this crazy talk about a, a, an owl on her wall. Most people would have not said that, but I insisted because I follow through when I have a feeling. But sometimes I thought, uh, this is one of those times it was really important to say something. So it all went, went together. It was all coincidence. How did I know that she had the owl in the back porch? Why did her house smell like roses for three days? I don't know. <laughs>